Good evening, wonderful people, great dear friends, wherever you are on the face of this very planet, we welcome you this very exciting evening. Today is the seventh day of the third month of the year, March in the year of our Most High Elohim 2019, with the time now standing at precisely six minutes past the top of the hour. It is six minutes past. 7 p.m. here in Brussels, in Belgium, the seat of the European Parliament, where we have been meeting a lot of very helpful and decent human beings about our faith, our suffering, our pain, the humiliation, the torture, the degradation, and the wholesale slaughter of the innocent. I welcome you, and as I do so, I will ask you to please also welcome other people as well, wherever they may be, because this is a worldwide broadcast. Radio Biafra circulates all over the entire 24 time zones of the world. And if you are not listening to us, then you are definitely missing something. I welcome you wholeheartedly. And I also ask you to please ensure that you are listening to us via our numerous platforms on www.radiobiafra.co, www.radiobiafra.co. We are on ipob.org, ipob.org. You can also receive us via Facebook on Radio Biafra page. You can also listen to us via any other platform, but especially our app. Radio Biafra app is there. If you have not downloaded it, then you're missing quite a lot. I encourage you to do so this evening. We are also on biafratv.co. We are on CHK across Biafra land as well, 102.1. In some instances, 102.2 or 102.3. I wholeheartedly welcome you. I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you, depending on where you're domiciled. As for us, it is good, good evening. My name is Nnam Dekano. I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. And also here with me is my deputy, the deputy of the entire IPOB worldwide, Mazu Cheme. For we have come that we may preach this very gospel to those who can make a difference. It is not everything that we tell you. It is not everything that we are obliged to tell you. But what I can say to you this evening is that we are doing all we can to ensure the restoration of Biafra in the shortest possible time. And as we attend all these meetings, as we continue this very essential diplomatic offensive, a lot of things are coming to light, a lot of hidden secrets. We know what is holding us, and we're doing all we can to free ourselves from the shackles of iniquity, from the bondage that is the damnable zoological republic. This evening, we must preach this very gospel as ordained and commanded by Elohim that his children may be set free and that those who are condemned to die will perish and not inherit Biafra. That is our prayer. And before we proceed, we must pray. We must hand over our proceedings this evening to Chukwukika Biama because he and only him will always come first in our lives. People try to misconstrue, to misunderstand, to misplace, and to misrepresent what we are here for. But Biafra will be dedicated to the almighty Chukukika Biafra. If you don't know, I'm telling you now. Biafra will be a godly nation. We will sacrifice the land of Biafra. We will offer it as sacrifice to Tukukika Biyama That his will may be done upon our lives and that of our children and those yet to be born. We are live and we are direct. 
And to cook it up, must blessing must be upon us as we pray this very evening. I ask you to bow wherever you are. Because we are very special, a very special breed like no other. Exceptionally made to bring light and development to the darkness that black Africa represents. Without Biafra, Africa is nothing. Without Biafra, the iniquitous existence in that very part of the world will continue until the end of time. Biafra has come that light may come into the darkened heart of Africa. Biafra is here to ensure that those who are kept in captivity may be set free, that the blessing of the Almighty may be upon his children. We pray this very evening the same psalm that David prayed many, many centuries ago that made Chukwokika Biyama to bless him and to bless the house of Israel. And the same way shall the house of Biafra be blessed. Sometimes with all the killings, all the pillaging, all the abductions, all the kidnappings by the evil forces of the zoo, with all the pain and the hardship we are forced to endure at the hands of the Alamadjiri, Fulani Janjaweed. With our hearts so heavy and burdened, sometimes we must be excused for thinking that we have been abandoned and forgotten by the Almighty, whose name we praise by the name we give to our children. This evening we ask Chukwoke Kabiyama put him in the Kobia no no lumo when you go away, man, and ya man. Came my Maya Nebraya where Mobane Banya no Agamas as to say league where he no basses on the Mosin as soon as you Chukwoke Kabiyama no Gawa. Can you wear net to you when I jag a man as no man on your decagachina can and kept room in her in Joe Maggie Bonya in a drunk in usage. He wear drunk and you wear bata and a brother's no but ticket. Where Hondia here up at Rasna Bundanaga home, boom, work on one, you don't have a look on one in Bundaga Garagosi Bundaga Bamboy, Hono one in my hair, Basarapa Bunin and Comogena Gabiga. And you were now again, Nanki, where for you will not forget us. Chukoki Gabiama, you will not forget IPUB. This very family that you yourself created that your will may be carried out upon the lives of those that believe in you. How long are you going to hide your face from us? How long are you going to allow uncircumcised that was a fallen majority to continue to run the lives of your children? How can you allow those that drive cattle from place to place to preside and superintend over the lives of those who are descended from the lineage that you blessed? How long are we going to suffer? How long will the likes of Okezi, Bazo, Devo, Mahi, Yohanes, and Daran and Yoshi continue to exist and to sell us to our enemies? How long will you allow them to remain? How long is our suffering going to be? Does it mean you do not hear our prayers? Does it mean our lamentation doesn't come before thee? Because every day do we proclaim your goodness before the multitude, before the congregation all over the world to say that only in Chukukika Biyama do we have every trust and every hope. We are not shying away from that inescapable fact that we are descended directly from heaven itself, for we are their friends, the blessed children of Chukukika Biyama itself. For how long shall I and those who are like us take counsel in the sorrows that inhabit our hearts. How long will our enemies, our Safulani, be exalted over us? How long will those that hate us be allowed to rule over us? How long will this suffering and degradation last? Come this evening and hear our prayers, O Elohim, our Lord and our God, our Redeemer and our hope. Come and lift this very burden from our shoulders and lighten our eyes because we will fall asleep and that sleep is death 
at the hands of marauding Fulani headsmen. Or else our enemies will say that they have prevailed over us, that they have risen against us. Those that trouble us will rejoice, but you will not allow shame to befall your children. We submit all that we are unto your loving hands because we trust in your mercy. Our hearts shall ultimately rejoice in their salvation because Biafra will come. If what we encounter today is anything to go by, there are millions of men and women all over the world who are influential that you have sent to carry this very message and this very gospel to the heart of every nation and every conscientious government around the world. Therefore, this very noble family of IPOB shall sing songs of praise unto thee. We shall lift up your holy name for Biafra will be sanctified and evil shall not dwell in it. That very purpose for which you allowed our ancestors to migrate to that very noble land will be accomplished in our lifetime that your name may be praised, adored and worshipped in the land of a free Biafra. Now and forevermore we pray. He said, he said, he said, and I got what we leave when it is very necessary that we pray here. Nobody is like us because, as I would always say before we came, there was nothing like us. Now that we are here, people can pretend, they can imitate, they can copy. They will try and wish to be like us, but they can never be because there's only one IPUB, one indivisible family under the supreme guidance of heaven itself. That is nothing man can do. Then I want to go away, but in India, they're gonna come to the hill valley, but they are nothing, they are beneath the soles of our feet because we have come to do the work of heaven and we are succeeding in this very noble task the job is not easy i assure you very very difficult when you have enemies who are as powerful as the multinational corporations that encircle biafra land you will understand what we are talking about if anybody is serious at all about the coming of biafra if they have done 10 percent of the work that this very family of ipob has done then they will realize how difficult this very battle is very very difficult but we are overcoming our enemies every step of the way you must stay with us and you must remain with us but you must remain steadfast above everything else because this job is very very serious as i said earlier in the brief address that i gave during our meeting this afternoon at the european parliament in brussels i made it very clear that there are some things i am not at liberty to disclose in public and you must bear with me and you must bear with ipob leadership it is not everything that we encounter that i will brief you on because i have come across a variety of people writing from their personal perspective i believe about how they think that this very effort to restore biafra should proceed and i have a very simple question for them what did you do when we came under sustained and vicious attack to lift the election boycott? If you cannot sustain the pressure, then how can you sustain the pressures of war? Do you think we'll wake up one morning and begin to march so they can slaughter us the same way they did in 67, 68, 69, and 70? We are not stupid. We will not allow a repeat of that nonsense. You can all bear witness to what is happening in Ambazonia. If you march when you're not ready, you will fall. If you don't know about military strategy, if you don't know about how wars are fought and won, then I suggest you go back to the library and read about all the great generals that's ever gone to battle. We lost the war in 1970 because we were unprepared, ill prepared. If you go into war without pre being prepared, without doing the necessary groundwork, without winning the friends over, who are going to support you when the votes count? When do you go to UN? When you come to places like the European Parliament, then you are finished. If you don't have friends, you are sunk. What is happening in Ambazonia will happen to you. 
they will slaughter us again and nobody will bat an eyelid this is something that we must take away in our tiny little brains those of us who don't understand what it what freedom fighting entails you need to grasp this and do it now we will march eventually on our terms and when we are ready we are not going to be stampeded into any premature engagement but i assure you that definitely we will march and when we do the zoo will know about it the world will know about it and then nobody will dare rise up to blame ipob understand this very clearly we know where we are going we are focused and we are dedicated you must understand that and assimilate that some of you answering Igbo names but uh, born of our safulani do you think we are stupid you think you can blackmail or pressure us or stampede us into taking a very hasty action that we will live to regret? Any day I declare the Republic of Biafra, you will know that we are ready to march. Understand that. But until then, do precisely as you are told. You must do as you are told. Because every step we take, every move we make, every utterance we utter, everything we do is designed to bring biafra closer sometimes you may not understand it sometimes it is too complex for you to comprehend but one thing is inescapable everything we do on this glorious platform on ipob all over the world is designed to bring biafra closer you must understand i appreciate this Let's go to war so that I will fail as we did in the past. No, I won't do that. When the time is right, we will march. That I can assure you. But before we do so, we must do the needful. Wherever you are on this very planet, if you have not joined this very noble family, then I suggest you do so. Because uh, the weed, Alamajiri, Fulani, they are coming for you. You have seen that they have resumed hostilities. The ethnic cleansing of Lower Benue has begun in earnest. The sacking of villages, the mutilation of children, the rape of pregnant women has commenced full time once again because people we are foolish enough to allow themselves to be used. Or should I say a very significant proportion of the Yoruba Muslim population allow themselves to be used. And I keep saying this all the time, that the problem we have, people from the southern part of that damnable zoological republic, of which Biafra is unfortunately a part of, is down to the Yoruba people in the west. I'm not insulting anybody, but they should use their tongue to count their teeth. They should stop siding with evil. They should allow fair competition to exist because without competition in this very life, you cannot succeed either as an individual or as a race. Since they're afraid of us, they don't want to compete on equal terms with us, then everybody must go their separate ways. I'm in fact very, very impressed with some people who have now seen the light and have conceded publicly and privately to me and other people that IPOB has been right all along. We have always been right, and we will continue to be right until Biafra is completely and fully restored. This very address this evening is designed to convey two very clear messages. One, that we are doing all that we can on the diplomatic front to win as many friends as possible, not just for Biafra, but for the way that IPOB is piloting the affairs of this very noble nation of ours. Secondly, we want to ensure that come Saturday, there is a complete lockout of those that conspired to bring Operation Python Dance into our land. Those men without conscience who will, in perpetuity, serve the interest of our Safulani who will kill their own mothers and their own children in order to please their full and master they must be swept away unceremoniously from the government lodges across our land starting from this very saturday a few days away 
you are under instruction to make sure that okay Zipazo is not returned to power to make sure that apc does not exist in Imo state to ensure that Dave Obahi is not returned to power in Ebony State. Very, very important. Because I have made this announcement repeatedly, the Fulani Caliphate have decided to work for them. You must understand that. Exactly the same thing they tried to do with Abaribe, they will try to do to our people. They will try to do with our people come Saturday. Because I announced on Radio Biafra that Abaribe must be returned unopposed. The powers that be in the zoo decided to cancel some words and some local government results and asked us to return again on Saturday, the same day as the government elections, to make sure that Abaribe is returned. If at all, we're interested. They couldn't rig him out. So what they had to do is to try and frustrate the effort of our people to freely declare that Abaribe will return to the Senate to continue the work he has been doing. On Saturday, we must make sure that OKC also packs his items to leave Omoaya for the very last time in his very hopeless life. And for those of you ever contemplating or considering voting for Kezi Bazo or anybody else for that matter, especially those in APC, you must realize this, that they came to kill us, that Fulani Heads men are still moving about killing people even as at today. They have not been labeled a terrorist group. Yoruba newspapers have refused to call for the proscription of Fulani headsmen, also known as Mieti Ala Cattle Breeders Association, because they are terrified of them, because they are scared of them, because they understand what will definitely befall them in the future. Isn't it a shocking surprise to each and everybody listening this evening that the Yoruba media never called for the persecution or even the prosecution of the perpetrators of the most heinous crimes across the Middle Belt, Flanny Headsmen, and elsewhere, of course, including Biafra Land. They never did. But when it comes to IPOB and Biafra, they'll be screaming from here to high heavens, and some of us are so stupid we don't understand why they do it all the time. I will say this to you. Every multi-millionaire or should i say billionaire from yoruba land from fulani land oh dear whatever status they are enjoying today to the oil in biafra land some of you don't know this but i will tell you that is why they insist on having one nigeria that is why they insist every blessed day in perpetuating the misery the fraud that is called the Zoological Republic of Nigeria. They will never change. If you're hoping that Yoruba will rise up one day to say that what is happening in Nigeria is not acceptable because of that, let's do something about it, then you are not only deluded, you are very, very foolish because they'll never do it. I am telling you today, those of you hoping on restructuring, on, on doing one thing or the other to sort of make the zoo, look like a place inhabited by human beings who are capable of reasoning i have this for you the Yorubas will never do it not now not tomorrow not ever anything that will weaken their junior alliance to the fulanese in terms of their access to the oil fields in biafra land they will reject it they will reject it I don't hate anybody. I don't despise anybody, but I must speak the truth because I am under oath to do so. The truth on this platform always, regardless of the consequences. All of you saw what happened and passed for elections in the zoo. 
But all of you also know that nobody in a civilized nation will allow that to happen to them. But most of you have accepted the rigged results. Even Chibika Mechi himself came out to say that uh, PDP should forget what happened. Uh, maybe in 2023, they will try and work closely with INEC to ensure that the elections will be free and fair. In other words, admitting on camera that the election was not free and fair. And you ask yourselves, what are the courts for? What is your legal system for? This man came out on national television to admit before millions of people that APC rigged the elections. And some of you just fold your arms and go to your useless Yoruba Pentecostal churches to say, let's leave it for God. That is how messed up we are. They have taken our oil. They have taken governance away from us. We are not in direct control of our destiny. And they even tell us how to worship Chukoki Kabiyama. People who were previously Muslims in Yoruba land converted to Christianity, opened up mega churches, advertised extensively and very heavily by Yoruba media to attract all of you who are gullible. You have gone there and you have lost your senses and the ability to reason properly. That is why you have radio and that's why you have IPOB. To correct your senses and to bring you back to some semblance of normality once again in terms of your ability to discern, in terms of your ability to reason properly. We must do what we have to do on Saturday, as we did during the presidential elections, to ensure that we convey this unmistakable message to the world that IPOB, indigenous people of Biafra, is in absolute and total control of Biafra land. I know they will come against us. I know they will bring their army, their police, their road safety and civil defense to rig in favor of their servants in our land. And who are those people? Okay, Zipa, Zude, Fumahi. And the APC in Imo. That's what they're intending to do. And we continue to receive intelligence reports. We continue to receive categorical information regarding the steps they are taking to ensure that the election is rigged. Okay, see, Pastor's wife went to Abala. I think that is in Obingwa. And some areas in Osisioma. We have the list of where they intend to rig. to purchase PVCs belonging to women without husbands, to the widows of those communities. They distributed 2,000 Naira each for the benefit of laying hands on a photocopy of their PVC. They promised them that they would return it to them after the elections on Saturday. And what have they done? They have used those PVCs. This is Okezie Ipazo's wife. What they are doing in Obingwa and in Osisioma. What they have done is to start their thumbprinting. Three days ago. They've been stuffing ballot boxes since three days ago. In the hope of using the Fulani army to smuggle these stuffed ballot boxes into INEC collection centers across Abia State. That okay, Zip has maybe announced as the governor of the state. And I feel sorry for our people. And when I say this, uh, people always tell me to try and take it, easy, take it easy with our people, but I can't. You want to be developed, you want to be advanced, you want a better life both for yourself and your children and perhaps those yet to be born but you are not prepared to make the sacrifices necessary to bring that positive change about. That is the difference between white Europeans and backward black African people. What is happening in the zoo today, what some of you are about to encourage to happen in Abia State cannot happen anywhere else. You complain about lack of essential amenities. 
road, water, schools, hospitals, and all the rest of it. Somebody has been in office for four years. Nothing done in those four, four years. All they succeeded in doing is emptying the treasury, taking pictures of projects, virtual projects perhaps somewhere in South Africa, publishing it on social media in the hope of convincing some of you who are so daft that those projects are being executed in Biafra and especially in Abia State. That same man occupying that very house, you know my GRA, asked Fulani people to come down. I want you to consider this very carefully. Okay, Zipazo, Devo Mahi, Niamodo, will you be unknown? And uh, Aboga Wosa all conspired with the Fulani North to bring their army to, into our land to kill all of us. Now consider the consequences. When Fulani headsmen march into our land, who is going to stop them after type UD? The same people who are prepared, ready, and geared to defend our land with our bare hands, more or less are the ones being killed and slaughtered by our Safulani servants in our land. And nobody is doing anything about it. And some people are even foolish enough to contemplate voting for such individuals or encouraging them to rig the elections. That is why I want Okeze Ipazu humiliated completely and totally on Saturday. Neither will anyone be foolish enough to vote for APC across our land. It's not possible. We will not do it. They will continue to rig themselves into positions where they find those on the ground so weak that their votes can no longer be defended. But in as much as we are concerned, okay, see, and the APC, they are dead in the water. We must prove to them that the land belongs to us. And our people must be very, very careful very very careful because the rigging why am i going on about rigging this very because it's, it's it's very very crucial very crucial that these monsters don't return to government lodges again for the simple reason that you think operation python dance is a child's play they'll bring something worse when there was a lull in the killing of um, TV people from the Middle Belt, some people quite rightly said that they are, they've halted all their slaughtering and their killings because they want Jubril to be returned to power. After that, the killings resume. Some dismissed it as mere uh, propaganda as usual because when they're telling them the truth, they say it's, a pro it's propaganda that you're... You're spreading the person, you're spreading falsehood. As soon as they declared Jubril Al Sudani Buhari's replacement as the winner of the presidential elections, they resumed their killing and slaughter of the weak and the innocent. It is so bad that newspapers even find it difficult now to report the killings. Everybody has been immunized. No one is repulsed or appalled by the level of carnage and slaughter going on in some communities that are not Fulani. Fulani headsmen are sacking villages and taking over. People are suffering. Eboi is almost a Fulani territory, thanks to Dave Omahi and those before him. But some of you are too blind to see. And I pray all the time, and I said to Chukwu Kikabiyama, don't allow what happened to the Jews of Europe to happen to your children, dear friends. And I will tell you why. At least the Jews were highly educated. They had a sense of purpose and a sense of destiny. They had very wealthy men, the Rothschild of this world, and many others, the Rockefellers, very wealthy men that sponsored and funded Zionism the way we know it. Some of you don't know this, but I will tell you. Should the same fate befall our people, should Fulani decide to invade our land tomorrow? Let me tell you this. CNN will not report it. 
Sky News will not report it. BBC will not report it. Al Jazeera will not report it. They can keep, they can go on killing our people and practically exterminate us from the face of the earth. Nobody will bath an eyelid. That I assure you. If Jews who are sophisticated in Europe could be killed in their millions, the way that we are killed, of course we've been killed before, but what is coming is going to be worse. When I say something, please write it down on a piece of paper. If our people continue the way we have been going, I assure you before heaven and earth that what will befall us will be worse than what we encountered in 1966 and 1967. But only this time around, you will have the likes of OKZ, Razo, and Devo, Mahin, Niamode, encouraging them to come. Forget all the warm words they've been speaking or mouthing for the past few days. They know what awaits them. And we are not going to relent. Sometimes, some people, they don't hear from me. They don't hear from my deputy. And they begin to wonder, is this thing we are doing ever going to work? Is it going to work? But of course it is going to work. It is going to work. Because we know what we are doing. We know what we are doing. And you must trust and believe in us. You must trust and believe in us. This is Radio Biafra for joining us for the very first time. The time now is approximately, I think about 18 minutes to 8 p.m. here in Brussels, in Belgium. We came to the European Parliament. We brought our petition before those who are learned and sophisticated enough to understand precisely what we are doing. And we are here to ensure that Chikoki Kabiyama's grace will continue to guide, sustain, and keep each and every one of us. Therefore, we must be resolute. You don't know where you stand. You read one comment and you fall apart. Some of you are not strong enough mentally to sustain this very battle. But every day you talk about IPAB, one family, I'm a hardcore. A petty local criminal looking for relevance. And some of them have proven themselves to be. Only 100 men will restore Biafra. I've not changed from that. Only 100 men. And out of that 100, I have not seen up to 18. We are about 17 right now. Once the number is up to 100, then we march. Then you know how serious we are. The work we are doing now is essential. Very, very important. That is why the last of OKZ, Bazudeh, Bumahi cannot be. Don't allow them. If they come back, we are, we are finished. We are gone. We are finished as a race. And um, for those of you in Imo, don't even think about it, considering APC in any way, <laughs> because um, they will be worse than the rest. Therefore, wherever you are, those of you in Lagos, those of you in Iguacha, those of you in Anioma under siege, under siege, Akwai bomb, our land is under siege. If people your land anang is under siege. Oron is under siege. Iwocha is under siege. And the funniest thing is that this <laughs> oh dear me. When you talk to somebody from Ikwere and you say you are my brother, they say no, we are one Nigeria, whatever rubbish it is. But I keep asking them. The army that is killing you now on the streets of um, rivers, where are they from? Where are they from? Do you see how stupid these people have managed to make us become? We are so hopeless that even when our enemy is standing in front of us and slaughtering us in our hundreds, we still empathize with them. Is it an evil man now that is doing the killing in Iwacha? You are in a country where you are being asked not to vote or else you will lose your life in Yoruba land. And you're telling me you are a Nigerian. Why did Mandela fight in South Africa? Why did Steve Biko fight and die 
for the freedom of his people because they wanted one man, one vote. The same people that claim that they are Nigerians, that everybody is a Nigerian. We shouldn't do anything to disrupt or upset the existing order. They are the same people asking you to vote for a particular person or else you will lose your life in Lagos. The same thing in Kano. You were physically restrained and stopped from voting. The areas where you tried to vote, they came there, disrupted it, and burnt the ballot box and the ballot papers within it. And you wake up the next morning and you tell me, I am a Nigerian. Do you see the extent of your stupidity and your hopelessness? Do you see why I don't see or regard a Nigerian as a human being? Because they cannot reason properly. Because they cannot make use of the brain that their head is carrying. You went out to vote and they said, no, you're not going to vote. You vote and they rig. You try and they keep rigging. And you come up again and tell me that you're proud to be a Nigerian. Oh, let's leave it in 2023. Who knows what God might do? I can't regard you as a human being. You are lower than an animal. That is why all of you must rise up and do the needful. That is why you must rise up and do what is right before heaven and before this very earth. Ensure that you join the nearest IPOB family to you and also make sure that you do the best within your powers and your capabilities to ensure that Biafra is restored as quickly as possible. We gave mandate to our people to go out and get rid of the criminals in office. We didn't ask you to join any political party. Not at all. Because we don't join political parties. IPOB, if we wish to, can be converted into a political party, but we have not done so. Therefore, let me repeat what I've said. Let me repeat. We are not a political party movement. Anybody joining a political party is doing so at his or her own risk and can never be part of our family. We are the people and the people is IPOB. Here we have it on very good intelligence. I have the names of the people that APC have designated to rig elections in Imo State on Saturday. Because what some of you don't know is that elections are won and lost at local government headquarters. That is where they smuggle in all the rigged ballot, uh, the, the, thumb, the stuffed ballot boxes to correspond to what Abuja have actually told the resident electoral commissioner, REC they are called. The figures have been asked to impute on the main result paper. How did they do it? Rather than announcing the result at the uh, polling booth or at the ward, they collect every ballot box and transport it. As logistically impossible as it is, and transport it to the local government headquarters, where hopefully all the stuffed ballot boxes will be brought in to tally with what the resident electoral commissioner have written. All these people that I'm about to mention their name this evening, they're all Biafrans. They are Igbo. Some are even from, even all of them, they are from Imo State. But they'll be wondering how come we stumbled upon the names. But we have it. These are the people that you will see on Saturday. That is how authentic you know this very information is. There is a, somebody called Clement Atibong. He will be uh, in Abombise. Uzo Chikwendu will be at Ahia Zumbise. These are the people that APC have appointed in Imo State to rig elections for them to put the for them in power. This, I'm just giving you their names, so you know. Theresa Akalono, Mwabishi, Theresa is from Ezine Hitembise. Theresa Akalono is from Ehimembano. We know who they are, all of them. Peter Korea, Idato North, George Njoko from Idato, 
used to be one manning um, the, the stuffed ballot boxes at Hidato South. A comma, Nebwe, Hitoboma, she'll be there to read. Ijoma Peter, Mary Mosu, will be at Ikeduru to read the elections for APC. Emeka Okike will be at Isialamba not to rig elections. Tidema Opara Nestor will be at Isu to rig elections for our Safulani Alamajiri APC. Odelenye Mary will be at Mbitolu. Ugotuku Blessing will be at Ngokwala Rigi. Obiora Okafor will be at Njaba doing his utmost best to make sure that um, Fulani has a foothold in Biafra land. Ugotuku Blessing will be rigging from Ungawala again. Obioro Kafo from Unjaba. Benjamin Nonyalem will be at Unkwale rigging. Daniel Lifu will be at Wangele. Achibie Obonne will be in Obo doing the best they can to make sure that Jubril Al Sudani is in control of Imo State. Ugwado Christian will be at Uguta. Ngoke Mwabweze will be at Ohajewema. Etelbet or Anebo will be at Okibwe rigging. Jim, Rebecca, whatever name that is, Jim, Rebecca, will be at Onimo rigging. Njoko Aloysius will be in Olo doing their best to make sure that APC is returned to power. Frank Okoria will be in Osu. Nkemdrem Juliet will be in Oru East. Abednego Okolia will be in Oru West. Emmanuel Aben Opera will be at their headquarters waiting to receive stuffed ballot boxes noel ikenna will be in a north a better orgy will be in a west let me make one thing very clear to all these people that have mentioned their names in the state you know it's not everything that we do that we announce or that we tell the world but let us make one thing very clear if you know they're related to you they're your father mother uncle sister aunt whatever they are i'll go through the names once again go and tell them that any attempt to impose an Alamajiri slave in Hopu Zodema on Imo people, they will live to regret it for the rest of their lives. They should ask those that have crossed us what they're going through. Then they will understand. Once again, these are the names of the people. One day you walk in Alabama, one day you want you did the Imo, that again or by. Go and tell them that we know what they plan to do on Saturday. They must allow the will of the people to prevail. It must prevail. The will of the people must. And the will of the people is not APC anywhere in Biafra land. The same way they'll be disgraced in Akwaibom. The same way they'll be disgraced in, in, in Iwacha, in River State. Those hoping to remove me from Wike, you are open at Tipa Buchip in school in Akwaka. You can never succeed. Never, ever, ever. And the most shameful part of it is that some people are actually encouraging Alamajiri to come into our land and take it, take it over completely and totally. So they are cattle, so they can build cattle colonies. Uchoga wants to build cattle colonies in, in, in Abia to please the north. Even in Ebonyi, they, they, they are now encouraging Alamajiri to run for, for councillorship and for for seats in the House of Assembly of Ebony State in order to prove to foreign people that they are, they are part of the uh, Alamajri one Nigeria, all because he wants to advance his political career. Why am I saying all of these things? So you will know. I am placing you on record, not myself, that on the seventh day, which is the seventh, isn't it? Yes. Of March. 2019 during a live address from brussels here in belgium i warned all of you about the dangers of allowing okay Wazo and david mahi back into office the consequences will be disastrous for everybody because alamajri will come with full force and they will decimate what is left of us you went in no? When it happens, I'll tell you, I told, everything I've said have come, come to pass. I said everything. If you don't know, by now I'm sure you know. These are the names of the people who will be doing the devil's work in Imo State on Saturday. Clement Atribong, Uzo, Chikwendo, Teresa Kalon, Wabishi Teresa, Peter Okorie, 
George in Joko, a common neighbor, a drama Peter Mary Wonsu, a Mecca Okike. I don't even know this one is a, is a real name, a Mecca Okike. Sounds a bit funny. Chedema Opera Nestor at his Odilinye Mary, Ugotuku Blessing, Obiora Okafo, Benjamin Nonyalum, Daniel Lifu, Achibie Obonne, Uguado Christian, Nwoke Nwabweze Ethelbert, Oranebo, Jim Rebecca, Njoko Aloysius, Frank Okorie, Nkemdelim Juliet, Abadnego Okorie, maybe it's from the same family, some of these people, Emanuela Ben Opara, Noeli Kenna, Ebere Oji. These are the people that hope to enthrone or bring about Fulani Caliphate into Imo State, and we must stop them completely and totally. And our people, both those of you, oh, I wouldn't say both, I mean, those in Kanu and those in Lagos and elsewhere in the zoo, you must begin to make preparations to relocate back to Biafra land. Very, very earnestly. You must make those plans or else you will live to regret it. What we are passing through today, other people have gone through it in the past. If you ignore these warnings, you will live to regret it. You will live to regret it. Understand that only Fulani people have three frontline terror groups in the world. Allow me to repeat. Only Fulani people that Yorubas are supporting, that Yoruba Muslims are supporting, are in control of three front-line terror groups in the world. Namely, Boko Haram is a Fulani invention. Fulani headsmen, the Miyeti Ala Katu Breeze Association, is the fourth most deadly terrorist group in the world. Fulani. Islamic State in West Africa, previously controlled, at the, listen very carefully to this, at the advice of the late Buhari, the son of Muhammad Yusuf, the founder of Boko Haram, was made the overall commander of Islamic State in West Africa, Al Banawi. If you doubt me, if Yoruba journalists are in doubt, they should go and check the court records of Al Banawi. He was arrested and arraigned before an Abuja Federal High Court, and he was released on the orders of Asorok. Go and check your records. The current leader of Islamic, I didn't say, but I said Islamic, you know ISIS, the Islamic State in West Africa, Al Banawi, was appointed at the recommendation of the late Buhari. Now, can you imagine if Biafran people, or Igbo people for that matter, we are to own three terror groups? Look at ordinary IPOB. That is peaceful. The whole world knows we are peaceful. We are being commended every blessed day for maintaining our peaceful stance. They are the ones calling us terrorists. And how did they succeed? Because, okay, see, Bazo, Dave, Umahi, Nyangwodo, Wiliobiano, Abogawosa, and to a lesser extent, Uguani in Enugu State went and invited Fulani people to come and tag their own people, their own brothers, their own flesh and blood as terrorists. Whereas those actually doing the killing of innocent people, women and children in the middle belt, nobody's calling them a terrorist group. Fulani, they own the only contribution they have made to the zoo is to give us three frontline terror groups, all owned by Fulani people. Yet they rig themselves back into power and you're all keeping quiet because you're, anyway, you're black. What can I say? This is Radio Biafra. We are live and we are direct and the time is now coming up to exactly the top of the hour, which is eight o'clock here in Brussels, in Belgium. And this is a Radio Biafra live presentation. Saturday is very, very crucial. If you have any information that will lead to uncovering the nefarious activities of OKZ, Bazu, and APC in Imo State, you must bring that to our attention so that we can expose it for the world to know. Something is applicable in a point. But let me make it very, very clear, abundantly clear at that. 
if any of these people we are to be allowed back into office, we will die. Fulani will come with a vengeance. There will be cattle colonies in our land, and we are finished completely and totally. The same thing that befell our WhatsApp people will befall us. They came fighting corruption. Oh, don't forget that. Not on that for the oh no, we we'll fight corruption. The same way that some of you are hopelessly gullible and foolish. Some of you with 1.1 million Facebook accounts writing gibberish every blessed day. The same thing you're doing now was exactly what some foolish Hausa people did when the Fulanese came from the Futojalon, settled in Gobe, in Sokoto, and claimed they came to fight corruption. They convinced the local Hausa peasants to help them fight corruption at their palaces, at the places of their kings. And they agreed foolishly and hopelessly. Today, every emirate in the north is presided over by a Fulani man. Awasa, as an ethnic group, is all but gone. The only thing they have is their language, Hausa language. The rest is gone. The same thing will happen to us. It will even happen to us at a faster, more devastating rate. Why? Because language, you know, your language, you can't even speak it properly without adding, uh, adding is uh, and, uh, but, because. When the Fulani come for us, there will be nobody left to fight for you. Because when the okay, see, also ensured that the only Agune chamber they have, which is IPOB, is decimated and destroyed. thereby paving the way for Fulani to march into our land unchallenged. And the same way that Hawosa people have been rendered irrelevant today is how you will all be rendered irrelevant if you survive the program that is to come. I feel sorry for those in Kano. I know those in Lagos, you, uh, <laughs> they are safe anywhere because um, you never can do anything to them. They only talk, you never can do anything to them. It's those in the North. You are living in an area where there are three active terror groups. The same way we lost our lives in 1966 is how some of you will be killed in the north. Day year then and pen back what today is the seventh of March. Write it down when it happens. I will tell you, I told you so. You will be killed, it's only a matter of time. The sooner you join the nearest IPOB family to you, the better for everybody. Saturday is a very critical day in the lives of our people. We must make sure we take back control of our land from the lives of Okezi, Bazo, and Dave Omahi. Amongst them, they're not even the, the people who could even manage to build Second Niger Bridge. Enugu on the express road they couldn't build. Enugu water road for where? Our seaports are not working. Our airports are not working. Just tell me what they have done for you. Name one thing they have done. If not to give you kerosene as um, Okazibas was doing. So they shouldn't be there. They should not. If you understand, you understand. You're talking about Biafra, yes. But I don't want idiots that um, when UN will come and say, oh, but what are your problems? Why are your people agitating? You will tell them, oh, no, they are miscreants. That's what I've been telling them. Ask any award, they will tell you that's what I've been telling them. Because of IPOB, EU came to Biafra land. Britain came to Biafra land. US envoy came to Biafra land. As soon as they stopped at Enugu, met Uguani, met, uh, what's the idiot's name again, uh, Omahi, met, okay, Zipaz with uh, Niamod, it's all over. Oh, don't mind IPOB, they are a bunch of miscreants. They said, but look at their legitimate. They said, oh no, forget them. They are our children. We know them. They are miscreants. But look at where we are today. That is why we don't want idiots occupying government houses because they do a lot of damage. Anybody who has done any sort of um, diplomatic legwork in connection or in relation to Biafra restoration will tell you this. The second thing they always ask you is, how about your people who are in government? Are there no Biafrans in government? Once you say yes, they'll ask you, but what are they doing? 
Once we tell them, oh, they are not good enough, they are this and that, they are stooge and whatever, and they'll, they'll be looking at us um, as if we've lost it. That they are your people. You say they are your people, and they are there. How come they are there if the people didn't vote for them? Because the zoo is a sovereign nation. Understand this. Understand how international politics work. Because the zoo is a sovereign nation. And we, IPOB, we are agitating to set our people free. When any envoy comes to our land, they will not come to Lagos Airport or Abuja or even they will take their local flights to Owari or to anybody else. Say, oh, is IPOB here? We want to see them all. They have come on a fact-finding mission on the ground. And very soon, two more countries will do the same. When they come, what do they do? They go to the government lodge. They go to the governor's office to ask him, what is happening to your people? And then the governor will say, oh, it's nothing. They are miscreants. They are, they are wheelbarrow pushers. They are frustrated. Why will we not be frustrated? After university education, after our mothers must have struggled, maybe sold gare or crayfish or whatever it is that we do and suffer to survive. After putting us through school, we come out. Master's degree holder, driving kekena pep, a full and a boy without wayek will make it to become the speaker of the of the house of senate i do believe such nonsense when buhari was alive he had no work certificate none whatsoever now that buhari is dead they brought in somebody from sudan to replace him and all of you foolish some of you can see because when we post they say, oh no, no no but this is not buhari now but that is the idiot Nasarok. and you all keep quiet because you're black and um there's something that keeps worrying me all the time and i know that the zoo media will not write about it anytime they report my address they always omit something that i say all the time if you want to know why chuko kikabiyama brought beer friends into that dark continent called africa cast your mind back to how we have been used and abused throughout history. We are the only people to rise up against oppression and injustice in Haiti. Igbo people, Igbo, Igbo, IGBO. Or should I say, be friends? Who we are the first people to rise up against colonial rule in Africa in 1929 about women. Biafran women from Akwaibom, from Cross River, from Rivers, from Bayelsa, from Anioma, from everywhere. They converge in Aba to stage a protest against the white colonial master, Britain. They were shot dead. We don't even remember them. To, this year is 100 year anniversary of the heroic rise of our mothers, and we shall honor them. This is um, 20, am I correct? Which is it 100 years or is it 90 years? Yeah. Is it 100 years? It's 100 years indeed. A bad women's riot is 100, 100 years indeed. Is, is it 100 years? You don't know your mathematics or what? <laughs> Which of the mass? Not to wonder, they start saying that um, a deputy doesn't know math. Is it 90th anniversary or is it the 100th anniversary? It's 90, isn't it? Are you sure it's 90? It's the 90th anniversary. 90 years, nearly 100 years. Do we remember them? Imagine if those women were Yoruba. I'm telling you, before you go to where they are being honored, you will pay millions upon millions of naira to get in. But there were mothers, nobody cares. And after that, I'll imagine it will slaughter you. And will bring back your hopeless, useless cops back up to the village to bury you. That is why you must join IPOB in the you. And that is why we must continue relentlessly and with a fanatical dedication to the purity of the soul of our movement and our struggle. We must be free. There is no alternative. 
Some people wake up one morning, they decide to write some rubbish about what they think ought to happen or should be happening. Some idiot, Haga Village Bang, Otakai Kai Nazund, after drinking water that they defecate on, they come out and start talking rubbish. And that is why the death of that boy that drank sewage water is a warning to everybody that has no access to clean, potable water. Especially some of those ranting, as usual, on Facebook. Your brains are damaged because some of the bacteria contained in the water that you drink goes to your brain and wreaks havoc there. You can no longer reason properly. People don't think like human beings anymore. I said this many years ago, which I don't know if you can still remember. I said that we are only reeling under zoo propaganda machinery. How about when BBC joined the fray? When they joined, what's going to happen to you? You run away now. And I said this, people are asking us now, please, can you go to war, do something? All it will take for you to run away from the battlefield is one helicopter distributing leaflet on top, telling you that Nam the Khan has been captured. When they came to my house to kill me on the 14th of September of 2017, had they succeeded in killing me, I'm sure by now there'll be no, I, everybody will have their own IPOB all over the world. There'll be f uh, perhaps um, 88 IPOBs all over the place, claiming autonomy. What we are doing will be completely destroyed. Even the fact that I'm alive, some people are not happy. But before they were shouting Biafra, Biafra, that we are one, we are together. It's now that I know that it's pending them that I'm alive. That's how evil some of you are. And after that, who would want to die for you? The way you are behaving, if not for IPUB, do you think? Now, maybe that is why people go to Fulani people and they collect whatever they can and say to hell with all of you because you don't know how to appreciate anything good. But we must continue because this is our calling, is our life, and is our ultimate mission and goal to restore Biafra and we're going to do it. Wherever you are and whatever thing that you're doing, you must pause to reflect and ask yourself this very simple question, is what I'm doing advancing the cause of Biafra or retarding it? It is not everybody that is supposed to speak at the same time. That is why you have parliaments. People vote people in to go and speak for them. It's not that you don't have an opinion. You do, yes. We know that for sure. But it is not every opinion that is valid at each particular point in time. I thank you all very much for listening this very evening. Which I don't know if there's anything, any announcement that you want me to make. So I can make it for our people to understand and to hear. But I had a meeting with UK National Coordinator and those workers as well. And I made it very clear how IPOB structure is going to be. And that's how it will be. The same thing applies all over the world. Do you want to say hello to your friends all over the world? Or do you just say hello? Our deputy is here with me. Yes, uh, I just want to say a very big thank you to all hardcore, dedicated dear friends who have been very much assiduously working hard towards this restoration effort. Our leader, Mazen Anton, has said it all. And I commend each and every one of us who have been with this family. Even our enemies know and recognize this the importance of IPOB. They may be going about or demonstrating all manner of shenanigans, but in their quiet time, they recognize the potency of IPOB. We are the people, and IPOB remains the most formidable, the most unstoppable of all grassroots movements of people around the world we are catholic in our approach to issues and there's nothing anybody can do about it we've been focused we've been resolute saturday is a day of action 
and we urge you, eminent Biafrans, to do the needful. For Biafra shall be restored in our lifetime, and we are not going to hand over this baton to our children or generations of Biafrans to come. Do your bit now, and the world will recognize whom we are. Thank you very much. And I will hand over the microphone once again to our leader, the indefatigable servant of Mosai God. We should be proud of whom we are that he has come in our lifetime. This is a real breed of Biafrans dedicated to this gospel of restoration. Because men have died, and because they have died, they died for nothing. They died not for nothing, but for restoration of Biafra. We must make sure that Biafra is restored on their behalf and in their honor. Thank you very much once again, and remain with us. Thank you, our leader. That's the verse of our deputy, Mazume Uchemefo, ever dedicated and ever determined and a loyal servant of this very great movement. The best of its kind in the whole world, by none. Hey, why not me? school. school. You know, when people go to village schools and um, as somebody accused Mageta to once, they know the price of everything and the value of nothing. The value of nothing. They have no honor. They have no dignity. Every idiot jumps up to think they can do what we are doing in IPOB. You cannot do it. If I hand over IPOB to you, it will collapse within a matter of hours. You can't handle it. Do you think I do what I do out of my own strength and no power? I never wanted to do this very work. From the I never wanted to. There are naturally ungrateful people. I will not serve them. You must do it or else you will go mad. You don't know, you don't know that's where I'm entertaining some of you. Ask those and they will tell you. But we must do this very work. doesn't want me to see You want me to speak against the spirit. That you could come and be upset with me as he was with Moses. But it will not work. I will do the work that I've been asked sent to do. And Biafra will be restored in our time. And then my job is done. Then is we not now. That time is coming. Let Biafra come. But we pray and we continue to do so because we don't do what we do by our strength and our mind. We do it because Elohim has decreed it. And in our lifetime, Biafra shall come. And there is nothing any bagger can do about it. Because our Chineke and we can hear. Thank you very much for listening. And from me, from here, this very evening, it is goodbye.